Online education pioneer Saul Khan is expanding the reach of his learning empire. His Khan Academy has produced more than 880 million free lessons on subjects ranging from basic math to computer science and beyond. Khan shared his mission with 60 Minutes in an interview in 2012. What's our mission? To educate children as well as possible. I've said it enough times, and it's in our mission statement, a free world-class education for anyone anywhere. We've talked a lot. Now Khan Academy wants to reach its youngest students yet, preschoolers. Founder and CEO Saul Khan returns here to Studio 57. Great to have you here. Great to be here. So preschoolers now with what? New mobile apps? Yeah, this is super exciting. So there's this uh, group called Duck Duck Moose. Uh, that my children grew up on their apps. Mm -hmm. They have 21 apps, uh, incredible, I'd, I'd argue the best apps out there, and uh, they came to Khan Academy and offered to donate their company uh, to the not-for-profit. Uh, so we're able to take these 21 apps that start, you know, if you have students ages between two and I would say six or seven years old, uh, everything from kind of creative play to reading, writing, arithmetic, um, and the collective apps were about 50 something dollars before. Now they're all going to be free. People can download them on, on Android and, and iPhone stores. I, I just want to pause on this because Saul and I were talking in the Toyota Green Room about this. But this was a company, Duck Duck Moose, my kids have used the same thing, that was wanted to be acquired by some of the biggest tech companies. And they said, what, no, we're going to hand it to you guys for free? Yes, this, I, when they first offered it. I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> it, <laughs> burying the lead. Yeah, yeah. Yes, th this doesn't typically happen. Uh, they, they came to us and they had other possibilities, but it turns out that the founders of this company, uh, it's a, a husband and wife, and they started very similar to me. They started making these things for their family, mm -hmm. and they decided that they would rather their legacy being free to the world, accessible, especially by the children and the families who wouldn't normally be able to access uh, their apps and eventually internationalize them. So we've had experts here, uh, several of them in the last just few weeks, uh, come to discuss the potential pitfalls of screen time for young children, particularly two and, and three year olds. How do you reconcile then uh, the use of screens, social media for teens and your mission? Yeah, and no one knows the full answer of the right amount of screen time, et cetera. The, what I tend to do for my own children, and my youngest is almost two right now, is uh, I care more about what he gets to do versus what he doesn't get to do. So if he spends a good amount of time playing with his siblings, going outside, uh, playing with blocks, doing tactile things, running around, if he spends half an hour a day or so on a, a tablet, and I do see, you know, my, my oldest learned his alphabets and his numbers uh, through Duck Duck Moose apps. Uh, so uh, I think there's a nice balance there. Why now? What was the inspiration? You know, I, I think it's it's just a um, a lot of folks in in education have been thinking about what to do in early learning. It's part of our mission, free world class education for anyone anywhere. We've always wanted to do it, and it was just this great connection with this Duck Duck Moose team, which has always made the best apps out there. And for them to say that they want to make them free and to make them part of a not for profit effort, we thought, what well, what a better time. Saul, so, a couple of years ago, you did go brick and mortar, uh, the Khan Lab School. Uh, my two are very interested. No traditional summer break, no grades, more active for the kids in picking their own subjects. How would you rate the progress then uh, of good old fashioned brick and mortar? It's been a great experiment. Uh, and, you know, we started it to show that with Khan Academy and things like that, we didn't think that purely online was how education mm -hmm. should be. It should be a mixture so of the two. And so in this school, uh, the kids, it's mixed age. Uh, they l work at their own pace. If they need to uh, spend time on more basic subjects, they can remediate there. If they need it ready to ra race ahead, they can. They can work on projects. And it's been incredible. Uh, the kids feel like cousins. They're progressing faster than we would have expected. We do measure how, how fast they're learning, and it's, it's faster than we would expect at a typical you school. You do require standardized tests three times a year. We do. Uh, so there are no traditional grades, uh, but three times a year we do benchmark the students. But the conversation around the standardized exams aren't, oh, uh, so-and-so teacher gets penalized because of it, or you're smart or you're not. It's much more of we, we share the results with the students and we say, okay, this is where you are. Uh, this is where um, you thought you were going to be. Uh, let's talk about it. And usually, I mean, we literally have well, seven or eight-year-olds saying, you know what? Now, I, I think I could have worked a little bit harder. Or, wow, that really paid off that I focused a little bit more uh, the last few months. I can see it in, in my results. And we also realize that a no test is perfect, and it's a small dimension of what a student is. It's like a benchmark. You know, rather than a test that you're supposed to meet, it's a benchmark of where you can improve. I want to get your take, too, on homework, because it was just, I think, last week that we did the story about this teacher in Texas who is 
you know, a story has been shared, you know, hundreds of thousands of times on Facebook, if not millions now, about no homework, about saying no homework for younger kids. What's your take on that? Yeah, I've written a lot about this, and it's, it's this fascinating thing where uh, some people like more homework, like less homework, and the, the simple answer is people, there's no correlation between the amount of homework and success. The things that do correlate are whether you're able to have dinner with your family and whether you're able to get a full night of sleep. So any time that homework or anything else competes with those things, I, I do think it's a negative. Obviously, the more time you can spend learning, the better, but you should have dinner with your family and you should get a full night And you think sleep. there's good research on that topic, on that no homework correlates, I mean, that, that homework correlates with success? They haven't been able to establish a correlation between the quantity of homework. And that's mm -hmm. because we all know there's different types of homework. You could just be memorizing words or you mm -hmm. could be doing something that's actually uh, more valuable. Uh, but they do know that, uh, or we know that, not having dinner with your family or not getting a full night's sleep, and it's to some degree common sense, is correlated with, with uh, suboptimal outcomes. Saul Khan has now just become the most oh, popular oh, just man genius. among kids. I know. But they should spend a lot of time learning. <laughs> learning is good. Learning but is good. Sleep. <laughs> yes. I know two little girls were in. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Best of luck to you Thank as well. Thank you. And wait, just quickly, the names of some of the, the apps, they can find them on the Duck, Duck, Moose on Android and iOS stores. Okay. Thank you.